For our Research Like a Pearl DNA Q&A series, we are going to answer the question, how can I create a to-do list in an Airtable research log? I think we all recognize why we might want to have a to-do list after we are through working on a research project or just to keep going while we're working on a research project. But here's some specific ideas that maybe will, you know, speak to you. So as we're working with DNA, we might want to be tracking some DNA items that need following up. Perhaps we've thought of someone that we want to have them share their ancestry DNA results with us, or we have a test that we need to upload to GEDmatch. Maybe we need to ask permission to do that. We could be needing to upload tests to other companies or seeking additional test takers. So these are all things that we might think about, but maybe it will be handy to have it actually in a list. And then for our documentary research, we have a lot of things that we're going to want to do. Maybe we will want to follow through with some research at a specific repository, or there are documents we want to send for, or there's online research. And of course, we always have future research suggestions, entirely new research projects that we might want to do. So there are a lot of things we might want to track in a place that we can easily access. So a nice solution to this for you just might be a list view on Airtable. Here is the typical grouping of types of tables that you can create. And we use the grid view. This is like a spreadsheet. This is what we do all the timeline, the DNA details, the research log all has this little icon that is for grid view. And these are other things that you can do, other types of tables. And the ones that have the little star and say pro, you have to subscribe and pay for the premium features to use those views. And then we have list, which is also a freebie. So you can use this without paying a dime. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I'll show you how you can use that. And maybe you'll get excited to try that. So here's just an overview from airtablesupport.com, and you can go here to learn more. So the list view type makes it easy to create, edit, and manage hierarchical data, whether it's projects and tasks, campaigns and deliverables, or a product roadmap and features, all within Airtable. List view is built for creating and managing simple or complex projects. So just recognize that a lot of people use Airtable for business applications. So many different things you can use Airtable with. Now, projects typically have a number of tasks and with list view, you can easily organize those tasks based on importance, urgency, deadline, status, or another category. This is the only view where you can see multiple fields across different tables at once. So with this list view, you can select up to three tables. So you could do say your timeline, your research log, and then one other, maybe your people table, DNA match details table, whatever you can think of. And then you can create a list from um, specific fields that you choose from each of those tables. Now, I am not going to show you how to do that. That is something that you can learn about in this article. But what we're going to do right now is just look at how you actually use the list view and create just a simple list from one of your tables. Now, you will see here that I have a lot of different views for this existing table. My full view is at the top, and my full view has over 100 records for John Kerry Royston. This is a timeline, and I brought all these in from a previous project I had done about five or six years ago. And so there's a lot of records here. Now, this project was tracking John, his two wives, and all of his known children, and the children of his second wife, Mary Polly Baker. This was all for my fourth generation of my four generation accreditation project. So I had it all in one big, huge research log. Well, when I decided to start working on this with DNA, I brought in the records that I knew were for him and for all these different people and put them in the timeline. And then I took all my negative searches and put those in the research log. So I divided that original research log up. But with 100 different records, 
it makes it a little bit difficult to see anything. And so I created views for some of the different people that I was interested in. And I didn't need a view for everyone, just the relevant people. So I have a view for Robert Cessna, who is a stepson, and Sarah Baldwin Royston, who is a daughter, one of his actually a third wife, Mary Polly Baker. And so I have these special views. When I click on them, then it just shows the records. So for John Kerry Royston now, I've narrowed it down to just 70 records. Yeah, he had a lot of records and a lot of those were court records. He seemed to be a very litigious type of person. Every place he went, he had a lot of court records. Now let's say that I want to create a list of to-do items. So I, as I was putting together this timeline and really reviewing this research, I noticed that there were some things that I needed to do more with. I needed a to-do item. I needed to search more records or expand the research. And so I wanted to have some type of a to-do list. So here is where that list of lists is right here, or that list of different tables you can, can create. And you'll see that all these are grid view. And then here's the grid view. And so I want to try list. So if I just click on list, then I get a little box that pops up and I can rename it. The default is just list. And so I just rename that. And because I just have the free version, it's collaborative always. If I paid, I could have it be personal or locked, but I don't. I just use the collaborative. And then I click create new view. Now, once I've done that, I get a whole new view of my table and you'll see all the different columns are gone. Now I just have one and it's the description of the event. It's my primary field, the very first field that has the name of the person, the type of record and the date. And so obviously I want to have a little bit more information than just the primary field, that description of the record. So what do I need to do? Well, first of all, I need to actually create a field for to-do because I don't have that in my timeline yet. And so what I did was I went through and looked at each record and tried to determine if there was an action item that I could do. Remember, this was an original research log, and now I'm looking at it with new eyes to see what else could be done with this project. And so I did find some things for this marriage of Mary Polly Baker and Samuel Cessna that I didn't find in Greene County. I made myself a to-do item to look in the neighboring counties and see if I could find that. And so I just went through and added to-do items for many of the things in this in this timeline. But there were several things that really didn't have anything else to do just because I had found the record. It didn't have any witnesses. It, there really was nothing else I could think of. So I had a lot of empty rows as well. So I had a lot of to-dos, but then I had some that just didn't have anything in that column. So going back to my list view, I can go to customize rows. This is a new little feature that will appear in list view right next to filtered. And I get to choose what I want to show. So right now it's showing only the description of the event. That primary field was the only thing that showed, but I wanna show that new to-do field that I added. And I also thought it might be helpful to show the source citation from the original record, the repository from that original record. You know, you could add whatever you wanted here, but I decided I really wanted just to show a few things in this list view. And then your default is the very, the very smallest row height, but I expanded it so I could actually see what I've got here. And then I can see that now I'm seeing marriage of Mary Polly Baker. And I, here's my to-do item front and center to search these different counties. Here is the source citation from the original record and, and where I found that or my original search so I could see what I'd already done. So I now have a nice new list and a nice new view here. So over here under full view, I have a full to-do list. So you can have your filters apply. So you have just a list for each person. I have a to-do for Mary Baker. I have a to-do for John Kerry Royston, or I experimented and tried a full to-do. So there's lots of different things as I was experimenting. I was trying to see what I really liked. And that's what you'll want to do is see what really would work for you. Now, remember when I talked about those empty rows. So when I first did this, I had tons and tons of records that came in that didn't have anything 
in the to-do column because there was nothing else to do with them. And I wanted to get rid of all those. I really wanted to show only the ones that had something in the to-do field. And so we can filter. So after I've customized the rows, and I have showing what I want to show. I went up to filter and I use this feature where to do, this was my field to do, is not empty. So basically it's saying it's the one that actually has something in it. And so it just magically got rid of all the records that had nothing in the to do item, which was really nice. And so, you know, if you do a full view, and you've got it all filtered nicely, and then you want to get down to just specific people, you could filter by the person. And so then I created another view, another list view, duplicating this one and filtered by Mary Polly Baker to create a to-do just for her. So you can do a lot of fun things with this and try different filters, try different customization of the fields you want to show, but it just gives you another way to look at your data. And then of course, once you have your view created, then you can do some sorting and you can do filtering. You'll notice there's no grouping in this view. So, you know, when you do list view, you don't have the ability to group, but you can certainly filter and sort. And then if you do want to try to combine information from a timeline and a research log and say correspondence, then you would use this set levels. It basically is nesting things and you can learn more about that at the support article, but you get to choose the three different tables that you want to bring in. And then you would again, customize the rows. So you could try that out, or maybe you just wanna have a to-do view for each one of those. It really is up to you and your project. Now, the other neat thing that you can do, just like in the regular grid view, you can expand the records. So say I am looking at my to-do item for this tax record of Robert Baker's Cessna, and I really want to read everything I know about this. Maybe I want to see all my notes, and I just want a little bit more detail. I can just open up the record right there in list view, and then I can scroll down and get all the information that I've entered in my timeline or my research log for him. So it's just another fun thing on Airtable to experiment with. And when we're coming to the end of a research project, it's always really good to do some kind of a wrap up to give yourself those to do items in a place that's pretty helpful. We, of course, do our future research suggestions in a report, but sometimes we have a lot of items suggested from our timeline or our research log that don't really go with the specific objective. But they're things that we want to make sure we explore in the future or just don't want to forget about. And maybe that would be the place that you would use the list view. So I hope you have some fun checking that out and seeing how you can make the list view and Airtable work for you. Thank you.